Hey guys, Jake Carlson here, host of the Modern Leadership Podcast. Are you ready to focus on amplifying your leadership superpowers? Let's go. Good morning, my friends and fellow elite achievers. Welcome to Modern Leadership, the podcast where each week we sit down with authors, entrepreneurs, and leaders to explore their journey, diving into the ups, their downs, and ultimately the lessons they learned along the way. Our goal to show that everything is figure outable. And today's guest expert is Karen Brown. Karen is the CEO of Velocity Leadership Consulting and is a subject matter expert on the unconscious mind, specifically leadership and professional performance. She has written multiple books on the subject. Her newest, Unlimiting Your Beliefs, Seven Keys to Greater Success in Your Personal and Professional Life is on shelves now. Karen, it's so great to have you with us. Welcome to Modern Leadership. Thanks, Jake. Thrilled to be here. Big fan of the show. Thank you so much. We got so much to talk about. But before we do, I got to ask you, what we miss by way of intro? What was missed on the intro is that uh, I was a successful senior executive for 20 years and simultaneously internal business coach, which just means that uh, I was really good at coaching my team members. I, I just sort of gravitated to it and was good at it. And I also found in doing that, that there was a barrier that we couldn't seem to get beyond, which I later found out through my pursuit of a lifelong dream to compete in the Ironman World Championships as a recreational athlete. Yeah. So tell me about that. That the key to getting beyond that barrier is the unconscious mind. So, so take us back. Those of us who aren't familiar with the World tri Ironman World Triathlon, this is the one that's in Hawaii, right? Yes. Okay. And we're looking at how many miles on the bike, how many miles in the water, and how many miles on those feet of yours. <laughs> it breaks down like this. 2.4 mile swim in the ocean, 112 mile bike ride, and a 26.2 mile marathon. And what's the time it takes an, an amateur athlete to complete this? It took this amateur athlete 15 hours and 45 minutes. Uh, and you have a total time of 17 hours uh, to do it. Yeah, this is this is absolutely amazing. I think this is just one of the wonderful topics that we have on the on the podcast. We talk to people who have a goal, a dream, something that they want to accomplish. They set their mind to it. And this is one of those really stretch dreams and goals. So take us back to that time. How did you come up with this idea and then get yourself ready for it? Yeah, great question. Okay, so like I said, I had been uh, an executive uh, in, working in the corporate world for 20 years and still had this lifelong dream, though, that I would come back into touch with every November or October when the coverage of the Iron Man was on TV. And I would just happen to catch it coincidentally. But we all know there's really not any coincidences. And every time I would stop and sit down and watch it. I would be absolutely moved to tears emotionally because I would be instantaneously, I would instantaneously feel a deep emotional connection to the race. I couldn't explain it. I couldn't describe it, but it happened every single time. And what I realized after watching it for so many years is that what was happening is I felt like I probably had the wherewithal to do it, but I wasn't sure. And it was the doorway to what I was capable of and finding my purpose and greater fulfillment and happiness. And uh, I mean, uh, honestly, that whole journey transformed my entire life and business. So I think that's why it, you know, my unconscious mind grabbed a hold of it because it was the biggest, scariest thing I could think of doing. And I continuously held myself back from it until I learned what limiting beliefs were, which were holding me back, discovered how to conquer them. And once I did that, I realized that I was the only one holding myself back. And here's the thing. Here's why I wrote the book is because I hear this and see this all the time. Every single human being on the planet has a big dream because I've not come across one yet that didn't. They have some big hairy, crazy, ridiculous sounding dream. And as human beings, and I, I can share with you in the how, because I know you're big on that, 
how we hold ourselves back from pursuing it through limiting beliefs, but how it's also the gateway, the doorway to what we're meant to do, to working in our gifts and to finding fulfillment. Yeah, and I love this. And I'm big into words. And I love the choice of words that you have here. Unlimiting your beliefs is the title of your book. And the other thing you talk about is no coincidences. You're absolutely right. We don't believe in coincidences on this podcast. What we call it is universal choreography. The universe is always looking for opportunities to test us, to push us, to swing a new dance partner in our way that will give us the opportunity to grow and become more towards our potential. And so you saw this as kind of a a key, a, a way to open a door to unleash your unlimited potential or your unlimiting beliefs. And so you got yourself ready for it. You did it. How was it? It was one of the most magnificent days of my entire life. And I will say that the two years it took me to get there, which is relatively short, right? I mean, at the time that I pursued this, I was 44 years old and a total recreational athlete had never ridden a road bike, never run a marathon, never completed a triathlon of any distance, and was a terrible swimmer. So th this was a big, a big deal. And to be able to cross the finish line two years, two short years after I started to pursue it, uh, that that two years was tough. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and you know, that's those are all covered in some of the seven keys. Uh, but suffice to say, uh, I had to work my tail off. And I had to do everything that my coach said. And then there were a bunch of things that I also had to do that I discovered along the way that quite frankly, if someone would have laid them all out in front of me before I pursued it, I, I wonder if I would have actually gone forward. Uh, but I, I, I feel like that is such a metaphor for all of us because that's what we're faced with every day. And every time we are looking to achieve our potential or step into that potential, because I think it's an ever evolving, moving, fluid thing. But anytime we're, we're looking to do that, there are, you know, roadblocks are going to pop up in our way, things that we didn't anticipate, things that we didn't see when we tried to look down the road at it. And it's in those moments that actually make the biggest difference. Yeah, there's actually a pretty big difference between mediocre and excellence or success. There's a pretty big gap. And a lot of people, unfortunately, not the listeners of this podcast, of course, Karen, but a lot of people see those roadblocks and find themselves on the couch dreaming. Or you know what I see when I turn on the TV? I sit there and watch somebody else living their dream. And unfortunately, too many people find themselves doing that. Now, of course, the listeners to this podcast are action takers, and they see those obstacles obstacles as building blocks. And so what we want to do now is we want to dive into this book and we want to take a look at those seven keys to greater success in our personal and professional life and kind of walk through it and see how we as individuals can go to the next level. So are you ready to start with key number one? Ready. Let's do it. Key number one. All right. Key number one is tap into the dream. And as we were already discussing, it can't just be any dream because the key to it is it has to be so big, so gargantuan that you are not at all sure that you can do it. In fact, when I would think about the Ironman World Championships, even though I had been athletic my whole life, I would break out into a cold sweat and I would have a feeling like I was going to vomit. I mean, that that's how big and scary it was. And I didn't have the first clue about how I was going to be able to do it. Like I said, I was nowhere near a triathlete. So this was, this was like me becoming a Martian, right? And so that's the kind of dream I'm talking about. Uh, and it, it, maybe it's easy to put it this way. If people aren't, if people don't laugh when you share your dream, because it's so gargantuan, it's probably not big enough. Yeah, this is important. And I want to pull this out for those listening. You know, when you start sharing your big dream, or as Jim Collins called it, the big, hairy, audacious goal, the dream that you have in your heart, when you start sharing that, there's going to be those around you that are going to say, uh, yeah, right you're going to run the Ironman or you're going to do this or you're going to do that. How do we overcome that, Karen? How do we stand strong and believe in our dream in the face of those who are trying to tell us it can't be done? That's where we get into key number two, which is, which is conquering limiting beliefs. And by the way, this is the number one thing 
that holds people back, not only from achieving their big, hairy, audacious goal or dream, but also from the things they want to achieve in their business, in their professional life, uh, also in their personal life. So th this is the common denominator uh, that holds everybody back. And that's also one of the main reasons I wrote the book, because we don't need to. Well, we're kind of ingrained with limiting beliefs, right? I mean, it's kind of conditioned into us through either the education system or the environment that we're around. It's kind of something that's that's internal to us. And we have to really dig deep inside of ourselves and really have a passion and a focus to overcome this. I mean, we really got to face some of our demons, don't we? Yeah. And it goes even further back than what you just talked about. It goes back to our prehistoric ancestry. So basically it works like this. When we were cavemen running around, and I just use that term equally, you know, it doesn't matter to me that it's non-gendrified. Uh, Cave when we person. were cavemen, yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It all means the same. Um, but when we were cavemen and, uh, we had to survive every day, when, when we were faced with dangerous, different, or new, our unconscious mind always jumped in to keep us safe and said, nope, we're not going to do that. Well, now it still works the same exact way. It's just like a computer system that has never updated itself, right? So anytime now in modern day, when we're faced with dangerous, different, or new, even something that we necessarily consciously don't think is dangerous, but... Uh, maybe our unconscious mind interprets it that way, it's still going to come up with that same default answer of, nope, we're not going to be able to do that. So that that's usually the reactionary thought, right? And that's what was going on with me for 28 years. That's, that's how all of our unconscious minds work, okay? And uh, when when other people, when you share your dream and other people say, well, you're not going to be able to run the Ironman, which my own husband said at the time, uh, and that story, that juicy story is in the book. Um, that is simply other people placing their limiting beliefs on you. Oh, that's good. That's important to recognize. Very important because you're right. Unfortunately, that does happen a lot. And this is why it's so important. And you know, you hear this all over the place. It's so important who you surround yourself with, right? Well, I can tell you when I verbalized to the people closest to me, this big, hairy, audacious dream of mine, I can tell you that four people, count them four, actually responded positively and said, I'm totally with you. I'll do, how, what can I do to help? I know you'll get there. Now, isn't that the importance of hiring a coach as well? Now, I know hiring a coach for an athletic event, you know, there's a lot of athletic training, but I'm talking about mindset coach, professional coach. You and I both do a lot of coaching in our careers. And isn't that the importance of intentionally, even if you have to pay to surround yourself with a mentor or a coach, somebody that will be there to support and believe in you and also give you the tools and keys to move forward? Absolutely. That's one of the many reasons. Uh, and sometimes you have to borrow their belief. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be real with you while I was conquering my limiting beliefs. Cause there were plenty, there wasn't just one. I had a whole page of them about being able to do the Ironman. My coach believed in me wholeheartedly. And often I would borrow their belief and say, okay, they believe in me. I must be able to do this. And you spoke about mindset. When I, when I started to pursue the Ironman, I thought that, 90% of what I was going to be able to achieve was physical and 10% mental. What I found was the exact opposite was what it took. It was 90% mental. And that's what a coach helps you with, whether it's, and it, it should be, whether it's an athletic coach. And I realize not every athletic coach does this, but it should be with every coach because you're also paying them to provide clear perspective because oftentimes that's what we lose as we are pursuing something. We just lose perspective and go, oh, wait a minute, uh, I, I, this is getting in my way, or maybe it's not meant to be now. Maybe I shouldn't be pursuing this because of this or this, right? Or these limiting beliefs come in and it takes someone that is unbiased, that is neutral, that can look in from the outside and say, no, Karen, you are still meant to do this. You just in, encountered a speed bump. 
So let's figure out the way to get through it. Here's some options for you. Now, you're cutting a little close to home with that story. As you talked about that, the hairs on the back of my arm stood up a little bit. And I remember the day that I was moving down to San Diego to go to law school and the car broke down and we had to tow it back to my starting location. And I ended up in the home that I grew up in, sleeping on the floor. Obviously, everything that I had I had packed up and put in the truck was out in the driveway. And I just laid on the floor and I said, this is a sign. I am not supposed to go to law school. And then that voice of reason, that mentor, and in this case, it happened to be my dad, you know, knocked on the door, came in, knew it was late. I was tired. I was exhausted and said, this is a roadblock. This is a stumbling block, but it's not the answer. It's not a sign. Get off your butt and get down to San Diego and go to school. And so it cuts a little close to home, these conquering limiting beliefs that come up and, and try to stop us, get us off path. Now take us now to key number three. Okay. One more thing to, to share about conquering limiting beliefs and how they work. So uh, the other thing that the uh, unconscious mind does is it just, it wants to keep us in our comfort zone because that saves it energy. And our unconscious mind is like our cell phone battery. It wears down really quickly when we have to do a lot of creative, truly innovative, fresh thinking. And when we're, when we're pursuing something that we've never done before, it just drains it in no time. I mean, spend a whole day doing truly fresh, innovative thinking. You will be the hungriest you've ever been. That's why. So that's another reason why our unconscious mind just tries to keep us in what we already know, what we've already done. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So key number three is no discipline. And this is an intentional play on words because it's the discipline to say no to the things that are going to get you off track from achieving your goal. And uh, I've listened to a few of your shows and specifically Aaron Adelheit about why we overwork and overschedule. Yeah. And that's a very common issue that, uh, quite frankly, that is the first goal that we tackle with every client we take on because everybody suffers from it. And I applaud Aaron for changing that in our world because it definitely needs to be changed. But uh, specifically in my book, uh, I call out no discipline, which is just having the ability to say no, which a lot of us have lost along the way. We don't ever say no to anything and specifically no to the things that are going to get us off track from achieving what is most important to us. And when I talk about SMART goals, you know, we've talked about SMART, S-M-A-R-T, uh, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, timely. I really focus on that R of goal setting because that's where it's relevant to what we want to accomplish. And unfortunately, sometimes we set goals that are not going to get us on the path to ultimately what we want to accomplish. If if one of my goals is to run in the world championships of the Ironman, and then my other goal is to spend you know 80 hours a week at the office, those are inconsistent goals. And so knowing what to say yes to and what to say no to, because anytime you say yes, you're saying no to something else. Uh, that's what's so important. Now, as I was typing this in my notes, I wrote K-N-O-W, and you're talking N-O, discipline, no discipline, but you're also talking about K-N-O-W discipline as well, aren't you? How do you mean? Well, in order to accomplish your goals, to live your dream, to conquer your limiting beliefs, you need to know and understand. You need to recognize what discipline means in your life. You need to be understanding and comprehensive clarity, if you will, on what discipline is. So you've got the no, I'm saying no to people and opportunities that aren't putting me on the right path, but I also have to know for myself internally what discipline means for me to hold myself accountable. That's kind of how I took it. Yes. Excellent point. Yes. Great job, Jake. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's also looking that part of that knowing is going to come when you look at everything that is on your schedule through fresh eyes, you know, like, it, like somebody else was putting it on your schedule does it actually belong there? Does it align? Will it directly lead you to achieving your goal? And if the answer is no, don't waste any time in getting it out of there. I mean, I, I had to do that. And at the time, uh, I, you know, I felt I was a pretty organized, highly efficient executive who, uh, you know, was very focused. And I had to add 22 training hours to my schedule every week, as well as 
you know, all the professional goals and targets that I had to hit. So I literally had to find a whole nother level for this. And that's how I developed no discipline and looking at it through fresh eyes. And then the no K N O W, like you just said, you know, as you were talking through that, a light bulb turned on for me about when we set our goals, we're setting them with a dream. It's an emotion. It's a passion. But then when we're setting the action steps to get to that dream, we need to set those with more objective, more, less emotion. So we set the dream. My dream is to run in the Ironman. My objectives to get there. That's my goal. That's my ultimate outcome. That's where my passion, my emotion, my dream is. But then the steps that I need to be, I need to train for 22 hours a week. Certain number of those hours need to be running. Certain need to be swimming. And those cannot be emotional because then I will think of ways to get around it. If I'm, if I'm dealing with just emotion, that was kind of an, a light bulb moment for me in that. Have you ever thought of it that way? Yes, absolutely right. Yes. Well, wonderful. Well, let's move on to key number four. Yes. Key number four is do whatever it takes and schedule equals goals. So we pretty much covered schedule equals goals just by our, our discussion earlier about no discipline and do whatever it takes goes back to what I said at the beginning which is you are going to discover so many things along the way that you're going to have to uh, achieve, you know, those small incremental things on the way to the big one that if you don't achieve them, you're not going to make it to the big one. And it, it's in those times where you've really got to hunker down and go back into or tie back into that emotion of why you're doing what you're doing, what it's going to look and feel and sound like when you achieve it. And that's then the motivation and the energy that it, it, it takes to work through doing whatever it takes, no matter what that is. Do you ever listen to the band Imagine Dragons? I love the dragons. <laughs> so last year in the Stanley Cup playoffs, they were they're from Las Vegas, so they came out at the game in Las Vegas. They played that song, whatever it takes. And just the passion, the emotion. And now to this day, when I hear that song, all I can think of is exactly what you said. It's that what does it take, you know, to have that energy within you to to go above and beyond, to take that extra step, to do whatever it takes to reach it. And so we've got the dragons represented on this episode of the podcast. Take us now to key number five. Hey, and just one fun anecdote about that. Uh, that song was my mantra uh, for two seasons, actually, when I did a really big race in southern France called the Tyrannus Argus which that is a tough race. I yeah, tell you, what. it sounds like a spider. Yeah. Or a, a big funky kind of dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's 120 K done continuously of trail running, uh, 10 different loops on 10 different parts of a course that is very, very challenging. I mean, I'm from Colorado and we have 14ers and I think very challenging terrain. Uh, I had nothing on this course. This was very, very difficult. And I was the first female woman to compete there. Oh my goodness. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. And I got delusional because of sleep deprivation. It took me so long. And the thing that I kept in my head was that Imagine Dragons song, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Feel the adrenaline in your veins. Yeah. That's nice. Right. I love yeah. it. Cool. All right. So the next key is make a decision and verbalize. So verbalization is a really powerful thing because our unconscious mind actually hears it. And it's almost like you're telling your unconscious mind to sit up and pay attention because this is what you want. So verbalization is really important. So once I actually made the decision uh, to tap into this dream of competing in the Ironman or whatever decision you're dealing with, first of all, it's important to actually make a decision, right? Instead of continuing to just kind of ride the line of decision one, one foot in one foot out, right? Well, I'll, I'll just stick a foot in and see what happens. Well, no, that's not a decision, right? So actually making a decision and then verbalizing it. And the story from the book about this, how it started is I had just like literally this, the, the week prior had made a decision in my own mind that I was going to pursue the Ironman. We went to a barbecue that weekend, bunch of people I didn't know, and sitting next to a stranger, and he struck up a conversation, and he said, well, 
so what's new and exciting in your life? And the Iron Man popped into my head and I thought, okay, I have nothing to lose. I'm going to tell this guy. So I said, well, uh, I've just decided to pursue competing in the Ironman world championships in Hawaii. And he didn't even miss a beat. And he said, Oh, well, you probably want to hire a coach. Don't you? I had a cousin who did that and they, you know, they hired a coach that had done the same thing and they got there in a relatively short period of time. And I just, I, I literally sat back with my mouth agape and thought, okay, wow, wait a minute. What just happened here? First of all, it, it was amazing to me to hear it come out of my mouth, like to hear it, to start owning it. It made it real. Yeah, it totally made it real. And the, the scientific piece of it that I later learned is that by verbalizing those, these things that we want and what we are going to do, it literally causes our unconscious mind to listen. And then it goes, oh, okay, great. That's what Karen wants. Iron Man, Iron Man, Iron Man. And then your reticular activation system goes to work in, and it's like radar. It's like fine. It goes out there scouring everything, looking for something that's going to help us get there. This is, this is part of the power of the unconscious mind that we're not used to tapping into. And this is what we call the universal choreography, right? The universe is swinging dance partners your way and you've got to be intentional when they come your way to, to grab on and go with it. Right. Absolutely right. And the second thing that happened is by me verbalizing it to this total stranger, he gave me something that was helpful that I had not thought of. And at the time I sort of played it off and I was like, oh yeah, what a great idea. Like I had already thought of it. <laughs> I, I didn't have a clue. I had no clue what I was going to do. So this was so helpful. And I just kept doing that the whole way. Well, I love that. That's key number five. We're looking at our time. We're not going to have time to dive into number six and seven, which is perfect, right? Because we want them to pick up the book and read it themselves. But why don't you give us cliffhanger, but just give us a quick idea of what six and seven are, and we won't go into the stories. Six and seven. Six is hire a coach, which we already touched on a little bit. And number seven is hit your goals, enjoy the victory, set new goals, and dream again. Because as I mentioned before, just... Pursuing and achieving this gargantuan dream of mine actually transformed every other part of my life and business. I mean, I, I didn't realize it at the time, but there were professional goals that I wasn't pursuing for the same reason. And so, and again, this is how the unconscious mind works. So that's why I wanted to write this book and make these seven keys accessible so that none of us continue to struggle with this or hold ourselves back. Yeah, I love it. And I agree with you. We are whole individuals. You know, what's happening in our personal lives, our social lives, and our professional lives are all intertwined and interplayed. And if we're missing opportunities professionally, what are we missing socially? What If we're uh, missing opportunities socially, what are we missing professionally? What in our lives can we reach to a higher level? I love this idea of tapping in to the key seven key steps or seven key uh things that get us to the next level of success. And I'd love to dive into them more. Unfortunately, we need to shift gears, talk about learning from leaders, get to know you a little bit better uh, by looking at what you're reading and what you're studying. And so are you ready for the next section? Ready. And waiting. Here we go. Question number one, what is currently on your Kindle or bedside table? What are you reading? Three things. Fast After 50, which is by Joe Friels, uh, a book called Sum It Up which is the biography of Pat Summit, the second all-time winningest basketball coach in history, 1,098 victories and two losses. And third book is called Immortal Diamond. It's by a Franciscan monk called Richard Rohr, R-O-H-R. He's written some 30-odd books and is a huge revelation every time I read one. Oh, very cool. Our next question, your leadership superpower. Yes. And right now I am donning my cape. <laughs> so according to your quiz, the superpower assessment. Yes. I am an inspirational leader. And I would take that even deeper to say that more specifically, I'm gifted at listening and picking up for what's really going on with people. I mean, so much so that 
uh, you know, and th- this is why I do and we do what we do every day here at Velocity, because our clients often say, after a silence, they say, how in the world did you think to ask me about that? No one has ever asked me about that, and I don't ever talk about it. And so it's your superpower to kind of read between the lines, to hear what's not being said, and then to ask the question, which allows them to verbalize it, which goes back to uh, key number uh, five. When they verbalize something, they internalize it, and therefore it becomes something that they're working on. Yes, absolutely. Because that's, that's usually the thing that is holding them back from whatever they want to achieve. Yeah, so important. All right, our next thought, a motivational quote, philosophy, or mantra, something you live by. Yes. The state of your life reflects the state of your mind, and you can change it. That's by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Yeah, why is that important to you? I think because it's absolutely true. And anytime uh, anytime I look at the state of my life compared to what I want, then I always go back to, ah, well, what's the state of my mind right now? And I find that it's the same as the state of my life. So then I'm able to, through that awareness, adjust it so that aligns with what I'm pursuing. And I often say it a little bit differently. I say personal development always precedes professional development. You got to get what's right between your ears. You got to get your what's between your ears right before you can work on the other stuff in your career, in your goals, your dreams, all that. So the mind first, and then that leads to the life. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Our last question then is the book that you most often gift or refer to friends, family, or colleagues? Okay. So if they are leadership friends, which that's a certain group of people, my favorite is Self-Deception in Leadership by the Arbinger Institute. This is hands down the best leadership book I have ever found. And I've read a ton of them. Uh, the, the second, and, and this is the final book I'll share uh, on this question, uh, to, to most everyone else that I would gift uh, a book to is Hardwiring Happiness. Tell me about Hardwiring Happiness and how does it relate to everyone else? Uh, it, it takes some of the, the things in my book, specifically Conquering Limiting Beliefs, and he really expands uh, upon them in an enormous way uh, through a lot of scientific study and research. And so basically it breaks down like this, that we are all capable of being happier than we are. And one of the ways to really hardwire that in is to internalize and focus on all of the great things that are happening that you're doing that you have done. And believe me, I'm, I'm very much oversimplifying for this. Uh, and then internalizing and expanding that internalization, spending time there instead of how we're hardwired, which is to notice what's wrong or to, ho- to hold on to what we didn't do well or what we think we failed at or whatever. Again, that is a default mechanism from caveman days that is still in our unconscious mind. So this is the reason I like uh, his book. And I'm I'm not even remembering the name of the author. I am so embarrassed. Uh, But this is the reason I like it, because it really can help everyone change that default, transform that default mechanism. Well, this is good stuff, and I sure appreciate you sharing it. And before we let you go, Karen, thank you for coming on the show and sharing such great wisdom. Your story is incredible. Before we cut off, uh, tell us how we can find out more about you and, of course, pick up a copy of this great book. Yes. So the name of my company is Velocity, meaning great speed, velocityleadershipconsulting.com, and put a forward slash and greater on the end of it. And you can find my book. You can find how to conquer limiting beliefs. You can find a video about something that actually precedes limiting beliefs and a whole bunch of other really cool stuff. And we can connect. Oh, wonderful. And we're going to link all that up on the show notes. They'll, the listeners of the Modern Leadership Podcast know exactly where to go to get all that goodness. Karen, you are awesome. You have an incredible story. Thank you for coming on and being this week's guest modern leadership expert. Thank you, Jake. Oh, this was such a blast. Appreciate being able to make a difference with your listeners. 
All right, my friends, what do you think? Are you inspired? Do you have a dream, a big, hairy, audacious dream, a goal, something in your life that you want to accomplish? What limiting beliefs are stopping you? It's time to unlimit those beliefs. It's time to take your success to the next level. It's time to believe in yourself and surround yourself with people who believe in you, coaches, people who will support you and take you to the next level. Of course, everything that we talked about on this episode of the podcast can be found at jakeacarlson.com slash ML140, episode 140. And until next week, I want to wish you the very best of days and even better life. Remember, everything is figure outable. Thanks for listening to the Modern Leadership Podcast. You can find me on Facebook at Speaker Jake, on Twitter at Jake A. Carlson, and of course the website, jakeacarlson.com. See you there. Bye.